Welcome to another edition of the Corner Booth Podcast from Green Spot Restaurant here in Montreal. I'm Aaron Rand, along with Bill Brownstein of the Montreal Gazette, and our guest today, Liberal Leader Dominic Anglade. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I want to thank our sponsors before we get going, the folks at uh, Empire Gold, National Carpet, and Guaranteed Industries for making this all possible. So let's jump right in. Madame Anglade. Uh, let's deal with the elephant in the room, as they say. Uh, the comments made by Immigration Minister uh, Jean Boulet, um, basically painting a picture of immigrants as being lazy, uncaring, and uh, what's that line? Not wanting to adhere to Quebec values. So your reaction first. Well, it's outrageous. It, it, it was outrageous that he said that, but at the end of the day, who made it possible? It's François Legault. François Legault made, like, has made comments over and over again about immigration, immigration associated with violence, uh, immigrants not being, uh, uh, having too many I immigrants, uh, talking about a threat every time he talks about immigration. So it's always negative. The whole question of diversity is always negative with François Legault, and he's been devising, uh, dividing Quebecers consistently in the last four years. So at the end of the day, François Legault cannot hide just behind Jean Boulet. It is totally unacceptable, but that's the politics of division that we have to stop. Should Jean Boulet be allowed to stay in cabinet? Of course not. Uh, but the real question is, what like the, the level of responsibility that François Legault has, um, with all the issues that we're fa facing, facing um, inflation, cost of li living, people that are having to choose between paying your rent or putting food on the table, uh, issues around labor shortage. What we need right now is to unite ourselves, is to make sure that we all stand united and we work together. This politics of division is really is really not helping Quebec at all. I want to go back to this because I know that's been a central part of your platform from the get-go, right? It's this uniting Quebecers as opposed to Francois Legault dividing Quebecers. But in real terms, so people hear that as a theme, how do you do that? How do you unite Quebecers? What's the process to do that? To tell Quebecers that the vast majority of Quebecers, uh, more than 60, uh, 65 percent, they don't want to see François Legault as a premier. They don't want to see François Legault as a premier. So they have to decide like who is it that is, that's best suited to fight against François Legault. And the reality is, if you look at if you look at a platform, if you look at the team that we uh, that we put together, like we want to make sure that we are this voice. We, we're sending the message that uh, the platform is the best one, answering the questions of, of citizens, generally speaking, and making sure that uh, we get everybody around the, uh, around the table to have a voice. And that's the Liberal Party of Quebec. But the, the, the reality, sadly, is that there are four parties splitting the opposition vote. Yeah. And that is not going to ever work to unseat Monsieur Legault. Uh, I mean, this election, I don't think. And that, that's generally a problem. And w what's really scary is how all the parties are... In your case, for example, you've got people like they're attacking you, like the ghost attacking you. You've got people like the the, the Bloc and the uh, and the Canadian Party here. You're in the middle. Why are you the one under attack and uh, not him half the time? You have people everywhere that want to divide uh, the divide Quebecers. Like if you look at the other parties, you have. Uh, one that is sovereignist uh, with the PQ, another one that's sovereignist, which, uh, which is Quebec Solidaire, one that is conservative, that doesn't have a clear stand of where it would go uh, regarding, uh, uh, regarding sovereignty, but even beyond that, uh, on Bill 2021, for example, wants to take it even further, and then you have the CAC. So at the end of the day, all of those parties are not parties that want to unite people, that they want to divide us. Right. So the message that I'm sending is the only one trying to make sure that every Quebecer has a voice is the Liberal Party of Quebec. And that's the, that, that's a challenge we have ahead of us, but that's also why we're encouraging people to go vote on, uh, on October 3rd. But when, at the same time, like uh, I'm hearing these ads like from uh, the Standish group, from the Balarama Holders group, it's saying how your whole holding Anglos hostage all the time and like like your which is your base and to a large extent in Montreal and yet why are you under attack and not the, and not the others and the point being could those votes actually I mean they, they won't be significant but could they actually in your own writing here in St. Henri St. Anne could they deny you victory to a certain extent 
so you can never be uh, like you, you can never be too confident like too confident because uh, you have to earn the trust every time every time there is an election you have to win the trust of the people uh, in your writing so uh, we're working really hard in uh, Saint Henri Saint Anne but we're confident we're confident about Saint Henri Saint Anne as we are confident with many other writings and at the end of the day uh, when people are saying you know we're running out of 125 candidates, we're running a few candidates here and there. They're never going to form the government. They're never going to be able to be in a position. Uh, they all, they, they're all they're diluting the, the, the votes at the end of the day. What we need is for everybody to get together again. And you will not find, Bill, a, a leader that is more dedicating, dedicated to meeting people, understanding the issue, fixing those issues with the only party vo that voted against Bill 21 and Bill, uh, Bill 96. So I'm a new leader of the Liberal Party. Uh, we I got elected within, a, w within the pandemic, but I I'm making this commitment and I've done this like in the last months, like meeting everybody and making sure that everybody's voice is heard. So to Bill's point, and I find this fascinating because I agree with Bill, you have two other parties, fledgling parties, attacking the Liberal Party as opposed to attacking the government in power, which I don't think I've ever seen before in a provincial election. So let's deal with what they're accusing the Liberals of. They say you voted for, and this is part of their ad, you voted for it's Bill 96. False. Well, it's wrong. It's plain wrong. It's plain false. We voted against Bill 96. We voted against Bill 21 with the only party that voted against both bills. Uh, and, and the reason why, because there are flawed bills and they need to be fixed. On, on Bill 96, on Bill 96, we need to remove the non-understanding clause. We need to eliminate all the, 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 the ambiguity around uh, health care, access to health care, uh, access to justice. We need to make sure that the whole question of immigration is solved as well. And on Bill 21, also removing the non-withstanding clause, but, uh, and, I should, not, I should not say but, but, but and make sure that teacher, teachers can teach. But wait, they, they, hold on a sec. They say, part of this they, the, the Canadian party as well as the bloc, that you helped write Bill 96. What does that mean? Well, you have to ask them, because at the end of the day, Bill 96 is a bill that we voted against. Uh, there were 200, uh, 200 sections, segments or uh, cl clauses on bill and at the end of the day we voted against that because it goes against the values that we defend same way bill 21 goes against the values of what we stand for at the liberal party so uh, but when <coughs> they say you helped write it you were in committee because there is a committee when that bill was introduced you didn't help write the bill I, of course not of course, this is not uh, this. This has nothing to do with us. It has all to do with the CAC and the way they want they want to divide Quebecers. It, it's all related to their own like the, the doing of the CAC. Okay. So let's be very clear on that. When you read the documents that are saying like, oh, the Liberal Party voted uh, like voted in favor, it's wrong. It's plain wrong, false, and I can't. Uh, but I think a lot of the m confusion, misunderstanding stems from the fact that a couple of your members went beyond what uh, even the CAC was suggesting in terms of taking uh, in courses at yeah. English CGEPs. And from that, uh, the, this apprehension grew that in fact, this was kind of pro Bill 96. And this is where a lot of the campaigning, certainly with those two, the, the two fledgling yeah. English parties here, ha has arisen from. Even though like the you backtracked from those positions, this is where a lot of the, uh, misunderstanding stems from. I, at the end of the day, if you step back a minute, what, what is it that we're trying to accomplish on October 3rd? We're trying to build Quebec a better, we're trying to make this a better place. We're trying to make this place an open place when people feel welcome, we, we value diversity, when we work on the economy that's not going well right now, when we try to fix healthcare, what we are trying to achieve is to make sure that Francois Legault doesn't get into power yet again. So. That's the message. It's not about, a, 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 and you have other parties saying, you know, uh, we should focus on the liberals, but that's, that's the wrong objective. The objective is make sure that we replace Francois Legault, and that's, all, that's why we should be, all be aligned on this. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting that they've chosen, for whatever reason, to do that, to attack the liberal party, these other parties, these new parties, as opposed to attacking the government. I didn't quite understand that, but that's the reality of what you're facing right yeah. now. You mentioned the economy. Uh, at the beginning of this campaign, 
When people were asked, what's the number one issue you want to see addressed? It was the economy, inflation, the rising cost of living. So I think what's happened, and I, I can tell you this by virtue of people we have had calling up to react, people have now reached the point where they hear white noise. There have been so many promises made by all the different parties. I don't think people know who's offering what anymore, which makes it even more difficult come election day to try to decide who to vote for. So as far as the economy is concerned, what's your plan, what's your message to deal with that and to deal with inflation, everything I've just described? We're the only party suggesting right now that we need to take measures that are going to be sustainable over time. So for example, for senior people, uh, we want to have an allocation of $2,000 per year that it's not taxable and that would come year after year to make sure that people stay in their home, that they, the best, on, on the, the best senior home is your home and we want to make sure that they stay, uh, they, they stay in their place. That's why we have a, a senior allocation. We're also telling families um, in Quebec that we want to return $5,000, yes, by reducing taxes, but also by making sure that school supplies for kids when they go to school on a yearly basis are free, to make sure that lunchtime, uh, they don't have to pay for the service they get for lunchtime, uh, to make sure that the public school is truly public and that programs such as uh, sport and arts and, and, uh, and dance and all those programs that exist, that they are free so we can ensure that our kids go to school, that parents have uh, more money in their pocket and that students can study. So, I mean, that's what we are, like, when you look at those measures, it's not a check that we will be sending people. It's really something that would come that would be sustainable in the long run. The Corner Booth Podcast is brought to you in part by National Carpet. Beautiful designs and rugs from around the world. Classic and contemporary and design services available, plus full installation. National Carpet online, tapinational.com. Healthcare? Healthcare, critical one. Um, in 2018, there were 400,000 people that were waiting to get a, a family doctor. Today, it's over a million people waiting to have a family doctor. And what is François Legault saying? He's saying, you know, we're never going to achieve the idea of having a family doctor for every Quebecer, so we're just going to give up on that. I don't want to give up on that. I don't want to give up on that. We have people that have chronic diseases that they cannot see a doctor. You have people with mental health issues that cannot see uh, a specialist. And we can fix that. We can fix that, that not only by adding more doctors and nurses, but also by, regard, by looking at the organization, uh, how things are structured, having more the doctors deployed differently in our system, and the activities that the doctors, the family doctors are doing in hospitals move them into clinical environment uh, so they can have more patients. But the last thing we need to do is to give up on that because then we're giving up on the whole public, uh, public health care system, which is absolutely terrible. So the CAC's idea of a Sante Quebec, yet another organization responsible for this, makes no sense as far as you're concerned? It's more bureaucracy, not focusing on the first line. And the first line is about getting a family doctor. The first line is also about getting the nurses to uh, not to work the way they're working today. You know that they have forced overtime. Uh, they are extremely uh, tired, exhausted. And if we want to have a system that works, we need to make sure that we eliminate those mandatory overtime uh, and that we ensure that we have a number of patients per professional in the healthcare system. Two years ago, we brought forward a bill uh, in order to fix that issue of having too many patients per uh, health professional. The CAC never called the bill, but we, the first thing we would do in the first 100 days, we would call that bill and make sure that we would work with the nurses to eliminate uh, uh, over time. You know, the promise overtime. of more doctors, which is something Quebecers have heard in the last Liberal government as well, which didn't necessarily come to fruition. Can, Same thing now from the CAC, four years, no improvement can, can I just there. Say How one is it different? Can, can, can I just say one thing? Between 2014 and 2018, over a million Quebecer, over an additional million Quebecer got a family doctor. That's fact. That's just a fact. So it's not true that it's not possible. We've done this in the past. Never was the health uh, system under so much constraint. Never have we seen uh, emergency rooms closed the way we have. Uh, like it's, it's, it's unheard of what we're going through right now. You have more than 150,000 people waiting for surgery. It is totally unacceptable. And you have a government that is saying, let's continue. I mean, it's, uh, it's plain outrageous 
we need to go back to basics and hire people, uh, recognize the labor shortage. Because the other issue that we're facing, Aaron, is you have a, a, a Francois Legault saying, there's no problem with labor shortage, we just have to live with that. That it would be suicidal not to, uh, to increase the number of people coming. Yeah. Well, that's completely opposite to what we need to do in order to fix healthcare. You know, one of the issues in healthcare, public versus private, a lot of the other parties suggest maybe private is the way to go, at least to help fix the public system. Do you believe we need more privatized medicine? The only thing we need to do with the private sector at this point, at this point is to reduce the list of pe people waiting for surgery uh, and not have the people pay. A Quebecers should not be paying for this, but just to make sure that we uh, release uh, the pressure in the system by using the private sector in order to operate. At the, to and have the government pay for that. Have the government pay for that. But in terms of having access to health care, having access to a family doctor, no, I don't believe that the private sector is the solution. We've seen it elsewhere. It's not working. It creates two classes of citizens, and that's not what we need. Oh. Uh, in the uh, Legault scheme of things, which is divide and conquer, Montreal has been left more and more isolated, which I find absolutely astounding. This is the cultural engine, the economic engine of the province, and yet we're almost completely forgotten most of the times, and, and it makes no sense. And, and you have uh, and you have François Legault that can't get along with the mayor, is fighting with the, the mayor of Quebec, fighting with the Quebec, uh, the, the, the mayor of Montreal, fighting with the, uh, the prime minister. I mean, always putting up a fight in order to divide Quebecers. And in Montreal alone, yes, we have issues regarding inflation, cost of living, and housing. Uh, we have issues of violence. Like here we are in saint henri saint anne in my writing, where we've noticed uh, an increase in violence. And it, it, it's not totally surprising when you see the level of pressure that people have to go through. And if we don't actually act, if we don't uh, recognize the labor shortage, that we need to have additional people, the people that are impacted are the, 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 the education sector, the health sector, a lot of those sectors that are being supported by women, by women that are uh, at the... F in, in, the, in, in the fire, I don't, uh, line of fire, I don't know if yeah, that's the right is yeah. in the line of fire. So, recognizing the labor shortage, finding solutions for that, uh, this is going to be critical, not only for our social system, but for our economy. But we're often, we're the scapegoat in Montreal so oftentimes, like when they point to the base outside of here, it's, you know, Montreal is where all the evil comes from, by culturalism, by lingualism, multiculturalism, but all, all these things, immigration that comes here. That's that, that's that's what is called the politics of division because yes. it's Montreal versus Quebec. Uh, it's uh, it is uh, it is immigrants versus non-immigrants. It's anglophones versus francophones. It's indigenous people. Today is the day of the reconciliation. It's indigenous people versus the rest of the population. Constant division, and that's hurting us. Enormously. But how do you reach out to the rest of the province to convey this message that Montreal's not the bad guy, not the evil uh, brother, sister? I think people are also realizing that he has been dividing us yes. everywhere. Not only on those issues around Montreal, but consistently. But how do you and convey how, that message outside of Montreal? Know, but I think people, people hear that message outside of Montreal in the sense that when I say the vast majority doesn't want to see François Legault uh, being the premier, it's because they realize at the end of the day that that's what he's been doing. And that's, that, that's what he's been doing not only here but everywhere else. Here it's even worse because uh, there's so many lines of division that it, uh, it seems like constant, uh, uh, constant comments from him. But it is everywhere. And now, what you also see when you go in the region, you go in Estrie, you go in Ottawa, uh, you go, I'm going to uh, Les Îles de la Madeleine, is how has this worked for you? What has been accomplished in the last four years? How are Quebecers better off today than they were four years ago? They're not, nowhere. Like, nowhere. It's not true that Quebecers are better off. And we need to continue sending this message. At the beginning of the campaign, I was talking about politics of division. And yesterday, a, a reporter said, you know what? What you said at the beginning of the campaign is now really materializing, where people can see it for what it is, because of all the comments that are being made by François Legault and, and, and Jean Boulet and, and the likes. So 
I believe that people are really like coming to understanding what what is the impact of this. The Corner Booth podcast is brought to you in part by Empire Gold. Paying the most for your collectibles. And remember, at Empire Gold, you get paid right on the spot. And nobody, but nobody pays more for your gold or silver than Empire. Online, empiregold.ca. So we, you know, Bill brings up an interesting point about Montreal. Uh, the Liberal Party typically, historically, is the party that Anglos end up voting for. Let's say that actually comes true on voting day. What about the fact that, and I think this has been pointed out repeatedly, the Liberal Party, for whatever reason, is not connecting with the francophone majority in this province. Why is yeah. that? Well, so you see, I th th this whole question about like uh, the francophone. Uh, first of all, it's a, it's a, it's a yet, yet again another dividing, uh, the, the dividing question. But I think there are francophones in those writings, in the writings here in Montreal, in Laval, in Ottawa, uh, in Estrie, francophones that are saying, you know, this doesn't make sense. If you look at, if I think of the candidates that we have. Um, I think of a Vicky Mea, I mean, I think of a Jean-Maurice Matt in Abitibi, and I think of a Guy Bourgeois in Abitibi, and I think of uh, uh, pe people in uh, uh, Normand Côté, in, uh, uh, in, near, near the Quebec City re region, uh, uh, in Le Binière Frontenac. I mean, those are all francophones that decide to run for the Liberals. They're all francophones and they're saying, we resent what we see today, and we believe we need another path. So we need more of the these people coming to us and saying... But why aren't they there already? Why have they been hesitant to support the Libras up until now? Well, prob probably because of this politics of division. Because, you know what? It works. Dividing people to concur, it does... Why do you think he's doing it? Sure. Because in the short term, in the short term it does work. It, it allows you to say, you know, I'm the only one. There's always a bad all. guy. You know, there's always a bad guy. And it, this is the old book, the old book of politics. I mean, every time you see dividing people has worked, but it's only worked for a certain period of time. Even and over time, yeah. people realize <laughs> this is not sustainable. Right. Legault even suggested that the Liberal Party shouldn't even exist in one of your debates. Uh, he said uh, there's no reason for it anymore because he's not a sovereignist or he's not, in, he's not going to hold a referendum. And your whole raison d'etre was to fight uh, independence. So he, w he went boldly and suggested that you don't deserve to exist. Well, and then he can't even answer what he would do regarding a yes. referendum. And he's putting up fights with the federal government. He's not working working with the federal government. It doesn't see the federal government as a partner as we, uh, as we, as we see the way it should work. It's putting up fights with everybody. It, yesterday was putting up a fight with a reporter uh, uh, on, the, on the radio. He lost patience. The people asked me, you know, what, what happened to Francois Legault? Why is he losing his temper? I mean, he's not losing his temper. He's just being who he is. He's just being who he is. And people are, are seeing it for what it is. So speaking of who he is, that's an interesting point. I think he stole a page out of your playbook earlier this week when he said, oh, uh, if they form, when they form the government, he will be more cooperative with the opposition parties. And people looked at that, and I know all the opposition leaders said that's kind of ridiculous, but he said that, and he said, this was his line, he wants to bring Quebecers together, which is part of your, your slogan for the campaign. What did you make of that? He loves our ideas because they think, oh, those are good lines, but he can't help himself. He is who he is. He has never collaborated in the last four years. Uh, in, like, during the whole pandemic, he was managing by decree, telling us what to do, how to do it, who to vote for. Remember the last federal election where he said, you know, this is, these are the people that you should be voting for, the, the, the conservatives. conservatives. So, I mean, that's not who he is. He's never going to be able to collaborate. And the best proof of that, he said this two days ago, look at where we are today with the comments around immigration. Do you really think you can collaborate with François Legault? He's got uh, a great honestly? sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, well, uh, a certain sense of humor. It's a, it would be good if it were funny, but anyway. <laughs> The Quarter Booth Podcast is brought to you in part by Guaranteed Industries. They are a Lennox premier dealer. They can take care of all your heating or cooling needs, residential, industrial, or commercial. GuaranteedIndustries.com or call them at 514-342-3400. They are a Lennox premier dealer. Good morning. Uh, I'm presently working as a full-time volunteer for a Generations Foundation, which brings hot meals and uh, snacks to kids needy kids in schools. What would your government do to get rid of this problem of hungry kids going to school? 
And the second thing is, is what would you do to keep kids off the street and back on uh, soccer and football fields? Okay, because I've been doing this for 50 years and we're not getting anywhere. Okay. So thank you, uh, thank you so much for for your question. The first question is uh, related to uh, kids not having enough to eat uh, during uh, during lunchtime. One of the things that we want to do. Uh, and, and parents have to pay actually even if they, when they don't get money they have to pay to uh, to get uh, service de garde uh, we want to make sure that this is free that this becomes free it's part of our platform uh, to make that free uh, but also we, we need to help parents in general to have more money in their pocket to support the kids uh, and with inflation that's that's really terrible the situation we're in so that's why we're returning like five thousand dollars per family in order to support them But there is a even more fundamental question about that is at the schools, uh, some of the schools, they get a dollar a day to feed, the, the, it costs them a dollar a day to feed the children. This program needs to be looked into to see how we can adapt it better to support kids that don't have enough, uh, uh, that don't, for, for which the parents don't have enough money to support, to support them. Now, talking about people in this, that they need to play sports, they need to, uh, To be more active, uh, one of the things we are, we're doing is all those programs, science études, art études, sport études, that are extremely costly, are preventing a number of people from sending their kids to this program. We are making them free as well, so that additional people that don't have the means can actually play sports. In the meantime, we also need to support community organizations that are organ like here in, in this writing, I can think of uh, Youth in Motion, for example, working with, uh, uh, with teenagers, um, supporting them à la mission. Instead of financing programs, uh, ideas here and there, the problem is we don't fund those organizations for what they're supposed to do. And they, they have to apply year after year for different, uh, like everywhere for different programs. That's not helpful. If you want to do something that is sustainable, then you need to invest in the, in the, in the mission of the organizations rather than different projects. That would be a lot more helpful for them to be uh, sustainable and support, uh, support our kids. How do you get the school system to get the kids moving? Okay, we have a, a sick system, okay, and I'm being very polite here, in the sense that um, it seems that our teachers who are trying to do a good job are not getting through to the kids, okay, and the school directions and uh, the commission scolaire and the governments are not, uh, don't seem interested in the kids, okay. Um, we. Just, I've been doing this for 50 years. We're trying to get kids on the field, and we can't even get into the schools to recruit them. So, you know, maybe we could the, have another, another, another view, another look. The um, right now, the the school system is really under pressure, more so than 15 years ago. Uh, is under pressure. Uh, they don't have enough people. At the end of the day, I have my child uh, in fourth grade, four different. Teachers. She had four different teachers in one in, uh, during one year. Like when you think about priorities, we need to get people into our school. Uh, les orthopédagogues, les orthophonistes. We need to get additional people. But if for, in order to do this, you need to recognize that we have a labor shortage. You need to recognize that we need to um, recognize uh, uh, diplomas from people that are coming from, our, from, from elsewhere. You need to have an open mind and say, we need to fill the school system, we need additional people. Uh, that's part of the plan that we have. But the fundamental issue today, if we don't fix this, we can't even get to, okay, how we, do, how we care about the kids moving. We can't even get the kids to get one teacher every year sustainably. So we need to fix that. Um, and. François Legault has been saying we don't have issues, uh, we don't need additional people. You, you heard the story about uh, uh, adding more people to the province that's, being, that's committing su suicide. I mean, it's terrible. It's just the wrong way and the wrong approach. You know what? I was raised by two, te te two teachers. Um, education is the like, core value to me and everything we can do to fix this, I will. We're going to run out of time. I want to ask you one last thing because it's the inevitable, and that is the election's over, the liberals don't win or maybe form the uh, official opposition, maybe you don't even win your own writing. 
Where does Dominic Anglade go on October 4th if you don't form the opposition? I go, I go as the leader of the Quebec Liberal Party. I will stay as the leader of the Liberal Party, period. And I will win my riding. <laughs> Dominic Anglade, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank though. you very much. Thank you very much to thank both you. of you.